Hey everyone, it's me, X Condenses, and today I'm so excited and relieved because my missing package from the Disney store showed up at my door. Um, I'm so excited about this. This has been a very long anticipated doll for me, and I honestly had no complaints about the doll from the promo pictures like everybody else seems to have, so, so excited. Also, my number appears to be 232. Anyways, uh, I'm a little nervous because the package looks pretty damaged, but I unbox my dolls anyway, so it's not a big deal. Uh, but I was keeping my Tiana 10th anniversary package, so I would have liked to keep my Rapunzel one as well, but it's okay. Um, so yeah, well, obviously I'll still keep it, but I'd like to keep it in nice condition. Um, let's get in. Hopefully she made it. Oh, I am pleasantly surprised. All right, there's some tissue paper. Oh, this doesn't feel real. Okay, look, let me look. She's so pretty. I'm so excited. Have you ever seen anything so beautiful? So here is Rapunzel and I'll show you her in the box real quick. Sorry about that. Powerful lighting. And we've got a 10th anniversary sticker right here with a really cute 2D art of Rapunzel. Very much looks like the Japanese merchandise of the princesses that they do in this art style. Or it looks like the Japanese art style that they use for merchandise for um, Tokyo Disney. This is what I'm talking about. This is a thing from Daiso Japan. And um, when it scrolls up a little bit, it'll show who I got this image from. It's just like a random reseller, but I just absolutely adore the art style that they use on the Daiso products, and that's what it reminds me of. I'm so excited about this doll! And then the back of the box. I'm actually stunned that mine came in good condition considering how bad the box looked. Um, and it says, in celebration of the 10th anniversary of Tangled, the Disney store is proud to present this worldwide limited edition Rapunzel doll, bringing hair-raising adventures to the screen. Rapunzel. I have a giant blind spot because of the really bright light right there, so like, I can barely read, I'm sorry. Rapunzel captivated fans with her long, magical golden hair and energetic spirit. Rapunzel is a unique heroine, and her free spirit, courage, and ability to light up the world around her are captured in this beautifully crafted doll designed by Disney Star Artists. It is a must-have for collectors and fans ready to swing into the tangled adventures of our princess while having the best day ever! Best day Anyway, I need to move my cat because my um, my camera is pretty perilously balanced. Okay. Anyway, let's get into it. So we have to untie the bow. I'm really bad at tying bows, so when I untie these, it's a death sentence. Anyway, <laughs> let's get her out of here. The box is so pretty with all the little flowers. I'm actually surprised they didn't go for the Corona symbol. It's, they went with a bunch of flowers instead. And then you also have it printed onto the plastic screen as well. It also says Disney Rapunzel there. All right, next is the doll and then the little back of the box. And indeed, I'm gonna cover it up, but I, I have number 232, but this is what the certificate looks like. I'm covering it up because um, scammers and scam artists will take pictures of other people's COAs and try to sell using them. So I'm just trying to be sure that my dolls aren't used for evil. <laughs> Anyways. So excited. Okay. Oh, she's so beautiful. She looks better in person than she did online. Most of them do. And I looked at a lot of pictures of this doll because I've really, I've been so excited. Um, anyways, I finally get to have a good looking Rapunzel doll. I like a lot of my Rapunzel dolls, but I have a lot of issues with all of them. And I feel like this doll is perfect. I know a lot of people hate her, and I hope that they understand that this video is not really the place to just spam hate for something. Um, do you understand? Anyway, um, to me, she's perfect. I absolutely love her. I love the original 17-inch limited edition Rapunzel doll's dress. Her face is hideous. It doesn't... I mean, it's like a fine face for a doll, but it looks nothing like Rapunzel. I don't know. It's really an entire miss for me. So I forgot to show Pascal and review him. He looks perfect. 
Look at that mold and the emotion in the face. The profile is especially good on this figure. He's so pretty. Isn't this amazing? And he's a perfect scale for Rapunzel too. Let me get her. Amazing. I'm so glad they included him. Yeah, sorry, I just needed to come in and show you because I completely forgot to do it in the actual video. Alright! <laughs> I've returned! There were so many ties on this doll. Oh my gosh. Pascal was actually tied to her, sh her dress with like this really thick em like embroidery floss and it was actually pretty difficult to get off of there without leaving any holes. There's still a hole, but that's because there was so many threads through one spot on the dress, but it is not really visible. They picked a good spot for it. I'm so in love with this doll, guys. First of all, I'm so impressed with the cape. This is the material that Show Yourself Elsa should have used. They really have no excuse to not have used this. And it really disappoints me that so many people hate this cape so much and are dogging on this specific aspect of the doll because... This is the exact material they should have used. Look how airy and floaty and dreamy it looks. It's so beautiful. This is exactly what I wanted on the Elsa doll that unfortunately was not delivered. Instead, they used organza and hemmed it. The reason that this cape is not hemmed, y'all, is because if you hem this, it looks ridiculous. I'm gonna show you a similar example. I don't have a doll that has that material on it, but hold on just a moment. My Midnight Masquerade Tiana doll, and this is a beautiful doll, don't get me wrong, but look how terrible the hemline looks on this and it's not because some terrible untalented person sewed this i'm sure they knew what they were doing it's just that fabric like this is really difficult to hem and when you do it leaves this really big pronounced line it does not look cute and let me show you another example giselle actually has the same material but hemmed but Hers is meant to be hemmed because it has things along the trim. It looks natural. With Rapunzel, it's a cape. It would not look this good. But you see that really powerful line all along the edge of this material? That's because of the hemline. If Rapunzel had that hemline, it would look pretty ridiculous. All right, friends. So I completely forgot about Megara, who actually has almost the exact material hemmed on her cape. And look at the edges. It's proof of concept right here. Look how pronounced and obvious the edges look. It still looks fine and I think it works with this Megara doll, but clearly it was a design choice to leave it out on Rapunzel because it is very defined and obvious edges and I don't think that's what they were going for with Rapunzel. It, it works on Giselle, it's part of the design, but in this one, I don't think that the hem would have looked very good, and it also would have prevented the cape from flowing like it does, where it can flow any which way. This is beautiful, and it's going to make for such good pictures. Also, these, these dolls are meant for entire adults that generally know how to take care of their things better and are not entire children, so I don't really think this needed hem. Also, this is not a high fray fabric at all. Um... Anyways, <laughs> rant over. Here's Rapunzel. This is one of the most beautiful dolls I have ever seen. I can't put into words how grateful I am that they gave her a new face mold. I'm gonna show you the old 17-inch Rapunzel face mold. Sorry guys, I believe that the old 17-inch Rapunzel limited edition had a slightly different face, but this is the Rapunzel face that we've been dealing with for the past couple of years, or the past 10 years. Look at this. Which one actually looks like Rapunzel and not like some reptilian imposter? Oh wait, seriously. I don't know what they were thinking with this face mold and the fact that they kept it for so long is truly criminal. This doll is unbelievably gorgeous. I wish honestly that they had made more of these 17 inch Rapunzel dolls and I hope that they make a singing 17 inch Rapunzel or something with this face mold because I want, I want so many of them. I want a ton of them. She's so pretty um the top of her dress is a white i don't know what to call it the one thing i'm gonna say that i don't like about that because i actually like it i think it's good in the design this might just be mine but look how this corner piece actually has like to her skin or to like another it's weird there's like a fold here it makes it look like this is ill attached i don't really know what that's about we have 
beautiful, I'm actually, there's embroidery there. Sorry, I'm trying to get the, there we go. There's this amazing embroidery right there that I actually did not see in any of the promo pictures. I didn't really pay that much attention. Um, I find it hilarious that there's embroidery right here because the biggest complaint I was seeing about this doll is that there's no embroidery here. And there's just this ridiculously intricate, interesting looking embroidery with rhinestones right here. Gorgeous. Um, you have these sleeves made out of that same, I don't know what the material's called, and I'm really sorry about that. Um, that same sheer fabric. Um, and then you have like a corset lacing mimic here with a little bow, and then you move down into these gorgeous little ribbon ends that are actually tied to the dress to form this pattern. They take out all of the ties, but I'm not going to take those out. I think they look great. And that's actually on both sides. And then the back is that mustard yellow color again. I think it's gorgeous. I think it, I think this looks like Rapunzel's gown that she wears in the actual, like for the bulk of the movie is very much a dress she made herself. It's not great. This looks like the dress that she would be dressed in as a princess in Corona. Obviously, according to the movie canon, she would not have long blonde hair at that point in the movie, but it's okay. But in Tangled the series, she gets her hair back and she actually wears a gown kind of similar looking to this. I'll insert it right here. It has like a similar color story and stuff. I don't know if that was intentional or not. Uh, anyway, you have this, this material is really high quality and um, really nice. I can't remember what it's called, but I've used it on a costume before and it was kind of expensive. Um, so nice and it really has a lovely flashback to it in effect. Flashback being like when you put light on it, what it does back at the camera. Um, and then all this beautiful foiling and carefully placed rhinestone edge. And then the under part of the dress is very reminiscent of the um, classic doll. Okay, so this is the 2013 Parks Rapunzel doll and the material they use for the little opening part of the dress. It's right there. And this doll has that design brought back into here. I think that's really nice. Oh, unfortunately it's not a full skirt. It's one of those fake, like, it's like a panel really. It's not like a full skirt, but that's okay. Because I really like the silhouette of this dress. I don't think it needed anything else. Although it does have a bunch of tissue paper underneath, so. Um, also, this is just funny to me. I saw people complaining about this specific aspect and it makes me just, makes my jaw drop to be honest. She's not wearing shoes. Now, if you've seen the movie Tangled or just read the Wikipedia article about Disney's Rapunzel character, you'll know that she doesn't wear shoes or if you've read the Wikipedia article or even just any kind of character synopsis of Rapunzel, Disney's Rapunzel, you'll know that she doesn't wear shoes. And then they go further with that entangled the series to explain that she strongly dislikes wearing shoes. Come on, really? Look, Rapunzel, I know this princess thing is new to you, but you gotta at least try to act. So that was the strangest nitpick I've ever seen. This doll people just have it out for, for whatever reason. Um. I just think she's exquisite. I understand that a lot of people don't like her color scheme, but the amount of things that we get with this doll, like this, uh, I haven't even talked about the hair, this hair, this face, the, the outfit's high quality, whether you like it or not, like whether you like the dress or not, it is a good quality, well-constructed piece. And she's Rapunzel, she doesn't wear shoes. Anyway, um, the hair, unfortunately, is a side braid. They did this because most people leave the doll in the box. I can acknowledge that. However, as somebody that takes my dolls out of the box, I would really like to have seen a back braid. Um, they do do this on all Rapunzel dolls, though they always do the side braid over the shoulder, so I'm not too upset about it, but I am a person who cannot make braids to save my life. I don't know how to do it. I know how to make a braid, but I can't make it look good, and I especially can't make the pieces chunky like this. I don't, it's magic. I don't know how people do that. So I'm not gonna be able to fix it. And if you put it to her back, it's always gonna have this awkward. Oh, never mind. Look how good that looks. No, it looks great. It still teeters off to the side a little bit, but huh. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I 
I should have checked first. Okay, well, it moves to the back just fine. So, um, comment rescinded. Um, anyway, I'm gonna push it back to the front where it's meant to be so I can show you. So, it has that big swoop of hair from the side part that they always do for Rapunzel. I tried to do it with my hair, but my hair is parted kind of down the middle usually, so it wouldn't cooperate. I really tried though. <laughs> um, and then it has some back here as well, moving into the braid. It's very beautiful. Usually Rapunzel has a much more powerful cowlick going on. I don't, I don't know if I should call it a cowlick. Let me see if I have a doll that shows it. This doll, drop one. This doll shows it pretty well. They usually like really emphasize the hair being swept over. And it's in the movie like that too. And they didn't quite capture that here, but I think it's because they were going for a more clean braided look. Um, and then her flowers in her hair are really, really nice. They're all actually dip dyed and have, uh, maybe they're not dip dyed, maybe they're printed, but they look dip dyed and hand painted, to be honest. I don't think they are, but like they have tiny little details all in the centers and they have tiny little beads in the center of each, except for these dark purple ones, of course. It's just so pretty and you get a ton of them and they're all different colors and they match really well with the dress I really love this and then down at the bottom you have the mini braid which Do they start the mini braid here? That's kind of weird. They should have had the mini braid all the way down It seems like it would be more difficult to start the mini braid here, right? Am I crazy? It's okay though. Um, it looks good. I like it I can't unsee that. That's so weird It looks very nice though and then you just have loose and they are very soft. They don't have any styling product in them. Mine have a, quite a few flyaways, so I'm gonna need to brush them out, but it's probably just from packaging. Also, when you're unboxing the doll, I forgot to say this earlier, or if you're unboxing the doll, they have a plastic tie wrapped around one of the sections of the braid in a random spot. If you pull on that, you will mess up the entire braid. Luckily, I noticed it and caught it before it got messed up, but that would have been bad, because I don't, I don't know how to braid, like I said. Oh, and there is a tiny little flower up here on the side in the back. I don't wanna go, I wanna keep talking about her. I love her so much, she's so beautiful. I think this is my favorite 17 inch limited edition doll. Her and Saks Fifth Avenue um, Cinderella feel um, the same in my heart right now. This is such a beautiful, beautiful doll. She has a lot of design features that I wish the other limited edition dolls had used, um, or utilized, excuse me. Um, but I'm so happy about her. Rapunzel's one of my top favorite princesses, if we're talking official princesses, in the Disney princess lineup, so that doesn't count Frozen and it doesn't count Megara and Jane, my actual, some of my favorites. Um, Rapunzel and Tiana are like tip top of my list. Who's my third favorite? I kinda have to think about it. I don't know. But Rapunzel and Tiana are like, oh, it's Moana, duh. Rapunzel, Tiana, and Moana are my favorites. Um, <laughs> Rapunzel so much. And Tangled is actually what got me into Disney when I was around 10 years old. I, I watched it online and I absolutely fell in love with it. And when I was a lot younger, I was very anti-girly. I never, um, I never wanted to be interested in anything that my brother or I considered girly just because I did. So like, I couldn't like the color pink. I couldn't like purple. I couldn't like dolls. I had some dolls. I never really played with them. Um, there were very, I had, I had set up these like boundaries for what I could like and be considered cool to my dad and my brother. I really don't know why I did that, to be honest. Um, and Tangled kind of kickstarted the finding myself in what I actually like and um, that sort of situation in my life. And uh, the movie is so good. <laughs> and I, anti-girly also included anti-Disney. I did not watch Disney Channel. I could not like any Disney things. I didn't really like Disney movies. I I didn't really watch them and I couldn't outwardly like them. I did watch The Little Mermaid and liked it when I was a kid, when I was a young kid. But like Tangled really opened up the part of my life when I started to explore myself and my preferences and what I actually like um, more. So it always has been very important to me for that reason. I hope any of that made any kind of sense to anybody here. Um, and now I'm a doll collector. I used to be very against dolls in general. I did have some and liked them, but outwardly I was very against dolls. So, a little different. And I'm very proud of 
my doll collection and I'm not afraid to talk about it with anybody, um, including random people that I've just met because they make me happy. <laughs> Anyways, that was kind of a weird tangent, I'm sorry. It's just Tangled unlocks a lot of things for me because it really was the movie that started all of this for me. And then I watched Princess and the Frog and poor, t poor Rapunzel got like pushed to the side because Tiana is my favorite. Oh, these two dolls are so pretty. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys so, so much for watching. Let me know what you think of this doll. If you have constructive criticism, give it. But, oh, I forgot to say that everyone's been complaining about the eyelash, so in solidarity I did a really long, um, <laughs> cat eye thing. Isn't her face so pretty? Just look at her face. Anyway, if you have constructive criticism or you want to explain to me why you don't like the doll, that's totally okay, but don't just be like, that doll has a long eyelash, it's ugly, because on the Facebook Disney group, people have been complaining about the long eyelash that almost every single designer and 17-inch doll has had since the beginning. <laughs> so goofy they're like i'm gonna cut that off it's so ugly it's like w would you cut it off of your um your original elsa limited edition doll because i don't think you would i've never seen somebody complain about it poor rapunzel anyway i'm glad that i have her and all of the people that were hating on her are gonna have to pay a lot more money on ebay to get her later so it's kind of a victory anyways thank you guys so so much for watching for all this time bye